What's up guys? Welcome to episode three of the KT-01 build series. Uh, this episode we're going to walk you guys through some of the progress on the chassis. We've got the CAD model complete, we've got the uh, fixtures complete, and we're starting to laser cut some parts and get the floor pan assembled on the chassis table. So we're going to walk you guys through some of those details, how we got here, and what the next steps are. So right here up on the screen, we have the, the finished chassis and chassis fixture assembly. A while ago, we finished the chassis, so we were ready to start building it. But in order to make sure all the tubes end up in the correct position, we had to uh, set up a whole fixture assembly. Up here on the screen, you can see we made a big chassis fixture, mostly out of sheet metal. We use these long uprights that are bolted to the chassis table. We have multiple of these chassis tables out in the shop. And then we bolt laser cut sheet metal parts to the fixture uprights so that we can accurately locate all of the suspension positions, the tubes, and any other important positions of the chassis. So if you look at these tubes, you can see they all have part numbers. This is a mirrored part number because it's a mirrored tube on the passenger side. This tube has a regular part number. The guys out in the shop, they have a laptop. They can see what tube goes where. It makes their job a lot easier. This way it's just very clear for everyone what tube goes where. And also even for the laser cutting department, it's much easier to inventory, much easier to know what tubes need to be bent. Just simplifies the whole process. Now that we are actually ready to start building the chassis, the first thing that we're going to do is make all of the sheet metal parts for the front suspension mounting. These parts will be sent off to laser. They will be laser cut, CNC bent, and then welded together. After welding them, they'll be put onto the fixtures. And then next up, we will start adding tubes to the fixtures and start building the lower side of the chassis. How you guys doing? This is Cody here from Armada Engineering. I operate the laser. Here in front of me, I have the first parts for the kit truck for 2024. Um, the parts are made out of Chromoly 4130. They're sitting here ready to be bent on our press brake, and then the guys will go ahead and weld them up. There's a lot more to bring a truck to life than just building the chassis and the suspension and the body panels. You gotta think about the whole package. Uh, another part of that is marketing and developing a website and branding the vehicle. Part of that, we work with a good company called H1 Media. They've helped us design the logo for the KT-01. It's really a tricky process to come up with a cool logo. It's gotta look kind of racy and be able to laser cut the logo and keep it intact is an important feature. vehicles that we build here are typically symmetrical and one way to keep it accurate is to work off a center line or a center plane. Uh, one thing we do to help ensure that is we laser etch a center line on all the tubes that span across the vehicle. This gives us a nice reference point to work off of when we're setting up uh, the tubes and other fixtures and tabs and brackets in there. Uh, we also etch the center line into all of our fixture plates and uh, then we use a big laser projector to project the center line down the entire chassis table, which helps us ensure the chassis are super accurate. Hey guys, I'm Matt, uh, one of the fabricators here at Armada. 
Today we're going to be talking about uh, tube prep. Usually what I like to do is I'll wipe it down first with either brake clean or acetone. Luckily a lot of this chassis has a lot of straight tubes so I can just chuck it right in the lathe and I'll just measure out usually like five, six inches from the end of the tube. I'll chuck it in there and use like emery cloth first and then scotch Bright usually is what I'll, is my typical go-to. So yeah, we prep the tubes to give it obviously the cleanest weld possible. And I usually only prep around the area that I'm gonna be welding. You don't need to prep the whole tube per se unless you have another tube landing on it and it just makes sense to prep the whole tube. But typically I just prep around the areas that are only gonna be welded. One issue we've been having in the off-road industry lately is uh, power steering pumps. Forever the trophy truck teams have been running a cast iron pump, but those housings are becoming harder and harder to find, especially in good quality. A few of the companies have been making their own billet pumps and they just haven't really developed them yet to the level that they need to be. Uh, but we've partnered up with a new company called Radial Dynamics, who's completely started from a blank canvas and came up with a new billet pump that's quite incredible. Uh, Eric over at Radial Dynamics is a wealth of knowledge. And this pump that he's building is really just a, a art piece. And this thing is sexy. Um, it's a billet housing. He's redesigned the layout of the pump. He's put the pressure side on the opposite side of the backing plate, which makes it way stronger. These things will actually reduce the power steering operating temperatures in your truck. And we're really excited to include these in our KT-01 kits for you guys. One extra cool feature about these uh, Radial Dynamics pumps is Eric actually puts every single pump that he builds on a dyno and he records it. And when you get this box with your pump, it has a QR code on it. You scan that QR code, it shows you the video of your pump on the dyno. It's just the extra little things like that that count and deliver a better service. I'm Matt and Kevin are working on setting up the fixtures for the, the floor pan of the KT-01. Uh, we've got our lower suspension bulkhead in place. This thing's fully welded. This is kind of the foundation of the truck. This is what we start with. Okay, it's welded together on the bench. And then we bring it in here and locate the fixtures. And then everything kind of gets built off of this. Uh, this fixture back here is what will locate our mid-engine plate. Uh, so this will make sure that the engine placement is correct and according to the rest of the chassis. Um, and you'll see every other two has some sort of little uh, fixture with an index in it to locate the tube. Uh, everything's laser cut and etched with a part number in it. So it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. All right, today we just got the uh, steering rack adapter plate. This is a big billet chunk of Pearl Molly. This will uh, locate the steering rack in the truck. You know, the past we've done them out of welded sheet metal and, and parts like that, but there's switch load that goes into the steering system of these trucks that you'll develop a lot of crack over time. So we found that the best way is to make a nice solid billet plate like this. Uh, it's kind of a standard thing. We're not the first ones to do this. A lot of people have done this in the trophy trucks, but this is just a really clean way. Uh, one thing that we do a little bit different is we put these little raised bosses uh, where the steering rack meets up to. I uh, started doing that on some of the sheet metal assemblies that we built because it would distort a little bit, would be perfectly flat. And then when you bolt your steering rack up to it, it would put the rack on your tension. So we kind of just put a couple small indexing pads on there so that the uh, steering rack is just sitting on those. And then when you tighten it down, it tries to keep it flat and reduce any tension on it. Morning guys, it's Saturday morning here at the shop. It's kind of my favorite time of the week. It's quiet in the world and it gives me time to focus on some of our goals and objectives for the company and for these new kit trucks. I've got my little helper Tilly with me here today. One thing that we're trying to do, I'm ha having a lot of fun with the, uh, the new build series videos that we're putting together for you guys. Uh, one thing I wanna make sure is we're not just showing you cool stuff. I wanna make sure you guys are getting value and, and learning something from the content that we're putting out. 
you know, I'm learning new things myself. The, the media side of this is all new to me, so I'm learning with you guys. Um, but we just want to create content for you guys that's educational and you know, hopefully inspires you guys somehow. So typically when we build chassis on this table, the chassis itself is quite a bit longer than the table. So we've built it in stages where we'll build the first section in one stage, and then we'll shift the whole truck forward, reposition our fixtures, and then put up another set of fixtures in the back to capture the rest of the truck. It's kind of time consuming to do that, and things move around, it's a little bit less accurate. So for the KT-01, we're trying to build everything in one shot so it never has to move. The way we're gonna do that is we created these extensions for the very back of the table. So we put these uprights on here. These are kind of universal uprights so we don't have to waste so much material when we're cutting fixtures for new vehicles. Um, with this guy, it's gonna bolt on to the upright and extend out past the back of the table. And then it's got these little cradles in it here so the, the rear cradle section of the fuel cell cradle will be fixtured all the way out here. Uh, and then we put a little leg in there to try to help support it. It makes it a little bit easier for us to install. And that'll allow us to build the entire chassis in one step without having to move it. It's Kevin back at Armada. I'm uh, one of the fabricators here and today we're going to be talking about the second stage of jigs. So you can see we have the upper portion of the jigs where a lot of the tubes are going to land and kind of help us position and hold everything in place making sure that when we're working on for example the rear portion of the vehicle something in the front portion of the vehicle isn't going to be all wonky. We got the rear portion where it looks like big machine guns that I was holding earlier but yeah basically the rear portion just so it doesn't hang low and then droop on the rear so when we're welding it everything stays happy stays where it needs to be and nothing gets moved so yep that's the, the rear portion of the jigs hey guys it's Matt one of the fabricators here at Armada today we're going to talk about uh, tube junctions and proper ways to go about them this tube for instance is our first tube this is our second tube that also lands and captures both of these tubes. So typically you want to weld underneath wherever the next tube lands, just so there's no uh, unwelded seam hiding underneath another tube. Basically, for, yes, for this whole junction, we go about that same procedure. If a tube lands on top of another tube and there's a seam in there, weld it before you land another tube on there. And that goes for every junction that on this KT-01. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so you stay tuned for the next episode and we'll bring this chassis to life. See ya.